Welcome to a feature overview of Ideal Automate. The general idea of Ideal Automate is to try to stop reinventing the wheel every time we want to do the same thing over and over again. One thing we have to do over and over again is capture input from a user. So this uh, website allows you to uh, generate code for uh, creating input forms. Input forms can be like a contact me form, a registration form, a purchase form, uh, a survey, or a test. So you're generating uh, code in a web browser rather than in Visual Studio and then once you generate the code you can download it into Visual Studio and customize it. So let's log in. I'm going to take the approach of starting at the end first and working backwards because that's how we often solve problems. We look at the goal and then try to work our way backwards. So I'm going to click on this link called uh, Live Examples Gallery to show you some of the types of things that you can do with the website. But one thing you can do is create a survey. Surveys help you to uh, gather information about what your people are thinking about your site. And here's a survey I created in about 20 minutes for Ideal Automate. You can see that it has a standard uh, Visual Studio uh, controls on it, uh, drop down lists, radio buttons, and so forth. You'll notice uh, that once a person completes the sur uh, or let's say they hit the submit button too soon, you'll see that uh, all the required field validators are built in. Uh, so that can save you a lot of time in coding, not having to write all that. So once a person does fill out the form, we'll close that, uh, they, you can uh, have an email sent to them, an HTML templated email that uh, shows the results of the survey to them. It'll show their, uh, what was their response on a particular question uh, to the right of the question. And then what this is highlighted in yellow, that's the response uh, of the general public and how many percent uh, of people responded to each uh, distinct response. Another uh, thing, uh, after they hit submit, uh, you can have them redirected to a, uh, a page that shows the information uh, on what the public is responding uh, in chart form. So all this has been generated for you and you can just redirect them to that page after they complete the survey. So that saves a lot of work on your part. A different kind of input form is a quiz because a quiz has correct answers. You have a lot of scoring you have to do. And so, although the form, here's a quiz, this is a simple silly quiz, uh, alphabet quiz. Uh, although the form looks the same, there's a lot of different uh, coding that goes on in the background to score the test and to uh, take care of that. So, once they complete the test, hit submit you can send them an HTML templated email. And this uh, email will show the number they got correct, the number they got incorrect, and the percentile of, uh, of the people that uh, scored uh, as they did, and the time that they spent taking the test. What this is highlighted in yellow are their incorrect responses. So that will save you a lot of time in coding for those two. So now we've looked at the back end of uh, what you're trying to create with it. How do you create it? Well, you follow four uh, sequential steps. It's very similar to Visual Studio. Uh, the analogy is very strong. So at first you open up a website. Uh, it can be a new website, and if you do, it can be an empty website, or you can have the Visual Studio default pages, or you can have a built-in affiliate program if you're trying to sell a product and you want to have people market it for you, then this can uh, 
built in for you. A lot of people sell that for a hundred dollars, and th there it is built in for you, so you can ha create have your own affiliate program. Very powerful. So I've already got a website set up for the demo purpose, and so I'm just going to open that. It's called CG for Code Generator. And then the first thing you'll want to do is add a page. So you right-click on the root folder and you add page. But I already have a page for the demo, so I'll just open up the root folder. Here's the event registration form that I created. And the first thing you'll do is edit the page. This will have the general parameters. So what is the title of the page? What is the a master page, heading, intro, uh, information? Then you'll add a component to the page after you've saved. Make sure you save each of these. Then you uh, select a component to add to it. At the present time, uh, all there is is an input form to add, but in the future I hope to have uh, cool grid views and detail views and so forth. So I've already added this uh, component of uh, uh, input form, so we'll select it. And this allows you to drill down into the details of the input uh, form. How do you want the headings to look for each row? What kind of buttons uh, do you want to show? Uh, do you uh, want to, to write the stuff to a log file? Do you want to write to a database? If so, where's your table? Uh, is this a survey? Is it, do you want an admin page? It's a grid view of the results uh, uh, that have been captured from your input form. So you don't have to write that code to and you don't have to go to your SQL database to look what's been entered. Credit card masking. Uh, it's important to mask your credit cards and not just leave them laying around so, or in a database or something where a hacker can get to it. And you can try to uh, reduce the risk of ha hacking by using uh, a blacklist to prevent SQL injection. And finally, when they hit submit, where do you want them to go? Do you want them to go to a thank you page or uh, just stay on the current page? So after you've entered this general information about the component, then you start uh, click on this rows and columns. And this allows you to add the individual fields to your form. And the properties uh, uh, allow you to uh, drill down into the properties for each uh, uh, field. So it's pretty similar to Visual Studio again except you have uh, a mandatory and validate email address that saves you a lot of time here. And you also have uh, where you can specify the list for drop-down list. After you've filled in all the fields on the form, then you will want to click on this button, uh, step 3E, where you'll ed edit where your emails will go for the form. Usually you want one to go to a customer and then the other one to come back to yourself that you can have it go to multiple people. This is just uh, the two general categories for it. Finally, after you've uh, saved all these parameters for your uh, page, then you click on Test. This allows you to compile that page. It happens very quickly there. It's already done. You have two options here. You can either just compile and cut and paste. Here's the code that got generated. Or you can compile and zip and down this downloads the whole website and uh, all the pages in the website in a zip format and you can uh, open that up and uh, run it or customize it in Visual Studio. Now that we've compiled it we want to click on this uh, uh, demo button to see it live and see how it looks. If uh, we don't like the way it looks we can tweak it and recompile or if we like it we're all done. Thanks a lot.